All right, this is Healthy Home's first tutorial video. Uh, it's just going to be going over some of the basics of using Windows 7. Now, I'm going to be going pretty quick through all of this, but remember that you do have a pause button, uh, and I encourage you to pause the video anytime that uh, you would like uh, to try out anything that I'm showing you at that particular moment. So the first thing that I'd like to go over is the start bar. Now, the start bar is this whole bar down here at the bottom. Uh, it's broken up into several sections. Over here to your far left you have your start button. Then down here across the bottom you have your programs uh, that are running or either pinned to the taskbar, which I'll show the difference in that here in just a moment. Then over here to the right you have your system tray. This is all of the applications that run in the background that you don't necessarily uh, mess with but uh, are necessary for the computer to function the way that they do such as our antivirus uh, is this icon right down here uh, it stays there all the time to make sure that the computer is protected if you ever notice that that V icon isn't down there uh, you might want to let me know as soon as possible and then over here to the right we have our clock and it also shows the date down there as well then the very far right over here is show desktop what that does is if you have uh, let's say several windows open for example and you click this button here on the far right side it'll take you down to a blank desktop now it didn't close the programs they're still down here if you were to click on them again they would come right back up but it's just an easy quick way to get to your desktop uh, I'll cover another shortcut for that later if I go down here and I click on the start button, the start button is actually, sorry about that. Uh, the start button brings up this full menu here, which is broken up into several sections as well. The very bottom left here is a, a search. You can search your computer for files. You can also search it for programs. Uh, above that, you see that we have the All Programs button here, which I'll come back to in just a second. Oh, I guess it took it to me, auto or it took me to it automatically. Uh, over here on the left, you have your Quick Launch uh, that you can pin applications into so you can get to them quickly. I'll show you that here in just a second. Then over here on the right, you have uh, this various folders that are uh, on your computer, such as uh, your Documents folder, if you wanted to quickly get to that just click on it and then control panel uh, devices and printers default programs none of that which you should really ever be messing with uh, at any point in time unless uh, you're given instruction to do so uh, because that's actually where you can mess things up in the computer pretty good if you're not careful then down here we have our shutdown button if you just want to do a quick shutdown and click the shutdown button itself or if you click this little arrow here to the side you can also switch user which <clears throat> you're typically not going to be using log off uh, which that takes you back to the password screen if you were getting up and leaving your computer and you didn't want anybody else to mess with it for example you could click log off or lock uh, then if you need to restart your computer for any reason here's the restart as well uh, all that'll do is it'll shut down the computer and then bring it right back up then there's also sleep down here which we also really won't be using now if I come back over here to all programs you can see that if I hover over it uh, or if you click on it either one it'll bring up this list of installed programs now, I probably have more here than what you're gonna have uh, because I use a whole lot more programs over here than uh, you do on your side but for example scrolling up and down through here let's say that you wanted to get to a program in the Microsoft Office suite such as Word or Excel you can see Microsoft Office here you click on it and it's going to expand and show you all of the programs that are in that folder uh, so let's say that uh, you know I wanted to open Microsoft Word I would just simply click Microsoft Word and it would open or to do the same thing you can see that as soon as you click on the 
Windows Start button down here that the cursor is blinking in the search programs and files so you don't even really have to click in there it's automatically selected uh, you could also hit your Windows key on your keyboard it's in between the control and the alt key down at the bottom uh, I think I can show you real quickly what I'm talking about it's this key right here if you hit that key, you see that Windows should pop open the bar down here. Here, I'm going to hit the key. And then you can start, start typing in the name of a program. For example, if you were looking for uh, Excel, and it's default selected up at the top because it's the most relevant search item uh, so you don't even have to drive the mouse up there and click on it you can actually just hit enter and it'll go ahead and open up Excel now another thing that you can do to make getting to programs easier especially the ones that you use a lot is you can either pin them to the start bar or to your quick launch here uh, now, what that means is, let me go back in here one more time and find Excel. Now, if I right click, you know, not the left button, but the right button on Excel, it's going to bring up this menu here where I can either pin it to the taskbar, which is this down here, or to the start menu, which is that initial list that pops up over here. So I'm going to pin it to the taskbar, and then you'll see that immediately a icon pops up down here showing me that I have Excel available. Now it's not running right now because it doesn't have uh, the box around it like say this program does that is running or Firefox for example. But if I were to click on it and the program actually is running then you'll see that this box comes around it here. Also, if you pin something to the start bar uh, and you want to get rid of it, you can right click on it and simply unpin this program from the task bar and it'll free up your area down here at the bottom again. Okay, the next thing that I want to go over is navigation and shortcuts. Uh, so briefly, I already mentioned one shortcut, which is the Windows key. Once again, I'm going to hit it here and the menu pops up. Uh, now the reason for using shortcut keys is because every time that you reach over and grab the mouse and drive that mouse around you're actually costing yourself and the company little bits and pieces of time. I know it doesn't seem like much but over the course of a day, you know, a week, a month, it adds up. So by hitting that Windows key I didn't have to go over and grab the mouse. It pops open the menu and then once again I can start typing in a pro, uh, program name and it comes up selected automatically at the top hit enter I've never touched the mouse I have the program open and then also while we're talking about opening programs without having to use the mouse uh, I'll also briefly touch on uh, you can close windows without having to use the mouse so what that means is by hitting alt F4 and there's actually a list of all these shortcuts uh, underneath this video on the page that you're viewing right now. You can see that Alt F4 closed that window without me having to touch the mouse. So something else uh, that comes in fairly handy is cycling through windows to see what's open. Now one way to do that is to come down here and mouse over the different windows. You can see a little preview of what's in them or if you have multiple windows open of the same program you come down here you can see well it's not a great example because I have the same page open in both but you can see that over here this one's showing me you know Google and this one over here is showing that I have a window open uh, showing uh, the Healthy Home website uh, if you have one of these windows open by accident, you don't want it open, uh, you can simply on the preview window click the little red X. Or you could select that program and hit Alt F4 and close that window. Now, 
something else uh, earlier I had mentioned that you can come down here if you have Windows open and show the desktop by clicking this button if you hover over it it'll actually you know preview the desktop so if you're ever working in a program and you bump your mouse down here to the bottom corner of the screen and your work goes away you know, there's no need to freak out all you have to do is move your mouse it should come back but another way to do that is uh, the Windows key plus D will minimize every window that you have open uh, down to the taskbar so that you can get to your desktop again. Okay, something else that I want to go over quickly is uh, ways to cycle through your windows. Now, I showed you that you can come down here and you can hover over these various windows, but that's not very quick. So a quicker way to do that is if you hold down Alt and then Tab and continue to tab or tap the Tab key, you'll notice that we get these previews of windows up here that we can tab through until we get to what we want and go to that window. Uh, once again, anything that you can do to keep you from driving the mouse around uh, is going to be helpful. Now, some other common shortcuts that I'd like to show. I'm going to use uh, Notepad here just uh, as an example uh, are the copy, paste, cut, delete uh, commands. Uh, basically commands that uh, whenever you're editing text come in really handy such as if you're in notepad or microsoft word uh, any of those programs so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to type in a simple list here okay now you can move this cursor that's blinking around with your arrow keys And right now you can see that I have it right before list item 2. Now one way to select list item 2 would be to click and drag over it. But once again that's reaching over and grabbing the mouse. Another way would be to hold down shift and then use the arrow right key and you can see that we can individually select the characters one at a time. Uh, now also you can do it you know, from the other direction hold down shift go left either way it works now for copy and paste uh, it's all too common for people to grab the mouse right click select copy or go up here to edit copy uh, another quicker way to do that is control C now by hitting control C you can see nothing changed but what it did is it copied this list to into the clipboard now the clipboard is just an imaginary place where Windows puts things whenever you copy, cut, paste. So now list 2 is in the clipboard. Now if I move down here below list 3 and I hit control V which is paste, you can see it put in another uh, list 2. Well for copy and paste that's fine. If you wanted to move that list 2 down to the bottom, let me just get rid of this again we can select it once again control X for cut I'll hit delete and close these up here control V for paste you can see that it took it away from up here and moved it down here and then control Z is undo Now in Notepad it only does one step, but in most programs you can continue to undo back. Control A selects everything in that text box. And then you have the delete key over in the center section of buttons on your keyboard. 
So control A and then delete gets rid of everything or clears everything out of the text box that you're in. Now this also works if you're say, you know, writing an email or uh, filling out a form on a web page. So that completes our initial lesson on navigating around Windows 7. Uh, coming up very shortly, I have a tutorial on uh, how to more quickly use Firefox, uh, which is our web browser. Uh, and then also I'm going to be putting together a tutorial on how to effectively use Microsoft Outlook uh, to check your email, uh, which is what we're completely moved to up here at Healthy Home now. As a matter of fact, if you have any old <clears throat> uh, Gmail addresses, uh, it's now company policy that you are not supposed to send any email uh, to any potential clients or anything related with Healthy Home business from that Gmail account. Uh, one last thing uh, that I want to touch on before I close out this tutorial is a lot of people tend to use Internet Explorer to browse websites. Now, I have purposely taken Internet Explorer off of the start bar uh, on every computer up here, but it does still reside on the computer, as you can see here in the start menu. Uh, so I'm going to open this up just to show you. If you ever see an icon like this uh, down on your start bar, right click on it if it's pinned unpin it you can see that here it's not pinned close it and uh, look for Firefox it's just to show you how to find it here and once again it's already pinned to the start bar but if I right clicked on it you know I could pin to start menu or pin to taskbar whichever you prefer uh, but it is company policy that we only use Firefox uh, up here to browse the internet.